St. Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, my friends, the Lord be with you. The televising of today's Mass is made possible by the contribution from an anonymous donor from Thornhill, Ontario. The Mass is offered for the spiritual benefits of their family and for peace and reconciliation throughout the world. Because of you today, we will be richer and in so many ways the many people across Canada and we thank you on their behalf. To prepare ourselves today to celebrate the Eucharist, to once again be nourished by the gifts of God's Word and His sacrament, we pause and place ourselves in God's presence, again conscious of our need of God's grace and His mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners, Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, you send us your spirit and call us to holiness, Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, on the last day, you will present us to the Father, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For what human being knows what is truly human, except the human spirit that is within? So also no one comprehends what is truly God's, except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit that is from God so that we may understand the gifts bestowed on us by God. And we speak of these things in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit, interpreting spiritual things to those who are spiritual. Those who are unspiritual do not receive the gifts of God's Spirit, for they are foolishness to them and they are unable to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. Those who are spiritual discern all things, and they are themselves subject to no one else's scrutiny. For who has known the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ, the word of the Lord. The Lord is just in all his ways. The Lord is just in all his ways. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to
My friends, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus went down to Capernaum, a city in Galilee, and was teaching them on the Sabbath. They were astounded at his teaching because he spoke with authority. In the synagogue, there was a man who had the spirit of an unclean demon, and he cried out with a loud voice, Let us alone. What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know you are the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. When the demon had thrown him down before them, he came out of him without having done him any harm. They were all amazed and kept saying to one another, What kind of utterance is this? For with authority and power he commands the unclean spirits, and out they came. And the report about Jesus began to reach every place in the region. The Gospel of the Lord. It's my sense that the inhabited world, which includes you and me, is suffering from fatigue and disappointment as we continue to be bombarded with, with the sense of the horrific suffering, death and persecution placed especially upon the innocent. All one has to do to verify such circumstances is to listen to the lead story of any major evening newscast. We continually are being left with those painful images of blood and carnage, as though human life is something to be wasted and cast aside and forgotten, even cheapened. It's fair to say that those who are the cause of such extreme behavior are fixed with an evil mind and a warring spirit. They have unclean hands, hardened hearts, and are driven by a blind ambition which disregards the dignity of the other. You know, when children are left without their parents, their mother and fathers. And when parents are robbed of their children, when destruction and devastation are leveled against the innocent, sin and a profound presence of evil become so painfully present. Events in Syria, Israel, and the Gaza, to mention a few, are living examples of this suffering, pain, and human devastation. In the midst of this heinous conflict, 
There is no evidence of God's presence. And in his absence, there is neither justice nor peace. We oppose all forms of radicalized behavior because it is a clear testimony to evil and nothing of God can be present. You know, Paul, Paul attempts to affirm this for us today when he says that those who are unspiritual do not receive the gifts of God's Spirit. For such gifts to them are foolishness. In today's gospel text, Jesus is seen as encountering and dealing directly with the presence of sin and evil as he encounters the person possessed with an unclean demon. In the language of today, we call the action of Jesus one of exorcism. As Christians, we believe that wherever and whenever the presence of evil is sensed or known, it must be exercised and driven out. Today, I invite us to collectively pray for the exorcism of all evil present, most especially in those troubled places where innocence and justice are trampled upon and where the dignity of God's people continues to be of disregard and openly violated. We can, we can, and we must be instruments of peace, especially by way of our commitment to prayer. You know, though the invitation to pray for the victimized in other places may call us to look outward and beyond ourselves, it remains essential that we not neglect the need that each of us has to dispel any and all forms of darkness which may live and linger within us as we seek to raise up our prayer with a pure heart and one that is undefiled. Though the power and presence of evil in world events could never be compared to our own state of being, we nonetheless need to be reminded of our own personal need to be cleansed and set free from any and all presence of evil, which may be present especially in our speech and action towards others. I find it strange that sometimes we hurt the people whom we love the most. And so we ask God's liberating grace to free us from any and all forms of those kinds of actions. And as we continue in prayer, and precisely because we are people of hope, we firmly believe that all sin and evil can and will be overcome by grace and that this redeeming grace will be upon us today and truly in the days to come. We pray that our hearts may be open to the generosity and outpouring of the abundance of grace that Jesus and the gift of the Spirit promises to each of us. And in his promise, we will not be disappointed. For this grace, for this blessing, Today, we give the Lord thanks and we give him praise as we go forward as disciples of hope. Now let us pray in our prayers of petition. Let us remember today all who are called to positions of leadership and service, both secular and religious, that they may as aspire to the truth and work to achieve peace and justice and care especially for the needs of the poor, we pray to the Lord. Today we raise up the needs of the sick. We remember also the suffering and the homeless, the unemployed, the homebound, the dying, and the terminally ill, and those who are preparing for death, 
those who are in prison, and all who are caregivers. For these persons, their intentions and needs, we pray to the Lord. Let us again and again be mindful of the continuing needs of our own family members, our relatives and friends, that the gift of the Spirit would generously minister to all their physical and spiritual needs, we pray to the Lord. In a special way, we acknowledge the presence of the Lord. We acknowledge and present to the Lord the special and particular needs of our viewing audience across the land, that the Lord will provide for them a generous response to their personal needs today and in the days to come, we pray to the Lord. And for the gift of peace founded on justice in those places where war and strife rob God's people of their dignity and respect, we pray to the Lord. Lord our God, you know our hearts and you probe our thoughts. Hear now and answer the prayers we present to you, those spoken aloud and those that remain in the secret of our hearts. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share the divinity of Christ, all our self to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me of my sin. My friends, pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of reconciliation and praise, and grant that cleansed by its action we may be made worthy and pleasing to you through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in goodness you created humankind, and when it was justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed it through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. 
Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, deliver us, we pray, from every evil. Grace is the grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always freed from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to one another a sign of peace.
My friends, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. I only say the word. In the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, we must have lost the way. Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may the blessing of our God be upon you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Eucharist is ended. Let us go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. to an anonymous donor whose generous contribution made the televising of today's Mass possible. If you'd like to sponsor a Mass or share in sponsoring a Mass, please call our office at 1-888-383-6277 for details.